it doesn't take me saying it for you to clearly see that there are some pretty bad patterns that people display, especially in relationships. But today I want to bring to your attention one of the worst patterns that I see playing out over and over in society. And it's one that keeps being fueled by society itself, and it may just be the sickest game ever played. Here it is in a tiny nutshell. Somebody does something to hurt somebody else. That person who is hurt reacts to being hurt. And then the person who was hurt is made the problem for their reactivity. It's easy to see how terrifyingly ill this pattern is when you see it played out on a physical level rather than an emotional and mental level. I want you to imagine that somebody walks up to somebody else with a baseball bat and hits them so hard that it breaks their leg. Now that person is writhing around on the floor and yelling and screaming, right? Now I want you to imagine that that person who hit them, or even the bystanders, are like, you know, something's really wrong with you because of how reactive you're getting. It's like, I mean, really, maybe you should see a therapist. I think that this is maybe some overreaction. And on top of that, I just need to be clear with you that my boundary is that people don't raise their voice to me. Now you can see that if you did that to somebody, not only would that be a complete gaslight, it is terrifyingly mentally ill, right? Guess what, guys? We're doing this to each other on a mental and emotional basis on a daily basis. As people, we like to make this big divide between the physical and the mental slash emotional, but it's a divide that doesn't actually exist, especially when you look at the fact that on a physiological level, the brain and the body responds to emotional pain the same way it does physical pain. Maybe even worse, people display this pattern on a mental and emotional level to each other, on a level that would make you sick to your stomach if you really got it. But the reason that you don't really get it is because we're in the emotional dark age right now. It was commonplace way back in the 1500s for people to have torture chambers. And guess what? People didn't bat an eye at that. But it's the same today. We are enacting so much damage on an emotional and mental level to each other, and we're reacting to it the same way we did torture chambers in the 1500s. What? I didn't do anything wrong. Bottom line, we are ignorant, totally ignorant to the emotional and mental damage and harm that we do to other people, including ourselves. So that you can understand this pattern better, I've got a few examples for you. Janet is married to Doug. Janet is a single mother. Doug came into the relationship as a super active, protective, responsible man who was competent and super attuned. Over time, this changed. Doug is now super irresponsible. He behaves as if he is passive, not particularly competent. He fails to protect Janet on account of the sudden development of conflict aversion. He is also no longer attuned, and as a result, he keeps creating conflicts. Janet is grappling with feeling like she has either been duped into the relationship by Doug or that Doug has had some mysterious personality transplant. The disappointment and grief and stress that comes with that have pushed her to the breaking point, especially since Doug can give her no answers as to why he has changed. Recently, they were out to dinner with somebody who Janet and Doug had never met before. Despite them having never met, this person they went to dinner with started to make accusations about Janet's character. Accusations that were actually false. And what did Doug do? Doug sat there and did nothing. He watched Janet and let Janet defend her own character. Because Doug had decided, well, he's already made his mind up about Janet, so there's really no point to me arguing with it. Well, as you can imagine, <laughs> this was somewhat of a betrayal of the expectations that were set forth in the marriage, and in most marriages between a man and a woman. So, what happened? On the way home, Janet and Doug got in a huge blow-up fight. The passiveness and failure to set the person right and decision to not protect her and instead let her fend for herself was wildly painful to Janet. She was super upset at him. But instead of seeing that she had a very valid reason for reacting how she was reacting, Doug decided that her anger was the problem in the situation. Not only that, 
In the middle of this fight that happened in the car, they had to get gas for their car, so they pulled into a gas station, and they were still in this big blow-up fight. But what did the other people who were there at the gas station that night see? They saw Doug sitting here like this, not responding, and simply getting yelled at. And so they decided, who's the problem? She's obviously the problem. My God, could you imagine being in a relationship with that chick? Essentially, the expectation that was put on Janet by other people was that she get hurt, but that she not react especially not with anger, that she stay in a totally loving state no matter what was done to her or what somebody failed to do. Another example is Dylan. Dylan is 15 years old. He currently still lives in his mother's home, and his mother is extremely unpredictable in her moods. Not only that, she's totally unpredictable in terms of when she does want to and when she doesn't want to meet her children's needs. She's created a completely insecure attachment with Dylan. She expects Dylan to entertain himself, except for when she wants him to fulfill her emotional needs. And whenever he has an emotion or a need that is out of tune with hers in the current moment, it creates big problems for Dylan's mother. She immediately shames him. <laughs> okay. Dylan becomes the family problem anytime he does not perfectly conform to his mother's expectations, no matter how difficult she is as a person, no matter how unpredictable she is, as a person. Okay, so let's get real. Dylan's mother is acting more as an adversary to her son than she is acting as an advocate to her son. So what happens? One day when Dylan and the other kids are off at school, she decides she's sick of having dog hair all over the house. So she decides to take the family dog and bring it to the pound while they're at school. When Dylan comes home to find the dog gone, Keep in mind, this dog is literally his only source for connection and emotional needs. He flips out. He goes into the living room, right up to the family fireplace, and he drags all of the family photos off of the mantle and smashes them on the floor. As usual, Dylan's mother makes this outburst the problem, and as a result, she decides to ship him off to a behavioral correction center for boys. He walked into that correction center being seen as the problem for his reactivity, and the reality is that this is full-blown abuse that everyone is participating in. It is full-blown abuse to do things like this to a person, much less a child, and then put their head in a noose whereby if they react to it, they are condemned as the bad guy. To give you another example, Rose is somewhat of a spiritual healer. She writes a popular blog, and she also holds seminars at a local healing center where people attend when they want to make positive changes to their life. Scott is a man who is attending one of these events. He has huge issues with authority and he sees himself as a healer and spiritual advisor. From the minute he enters the room, he's in a competitive power struggle with Rose. On a subconscious level, he is not attending this event to change anything about himself. The real reason is attending is to challenge Rose and to get all the other people at the event to see him as the truer spiritual teacher. He derails the seminar to contradict everything that Rose is saying and directs the entire conversation towards questioning her character and insulting her over and over again in front of the rest of the class. During the course of this conversation, Rose becomes flushed red. She becomes incredibly frustrated at Scott. Even though she's not verbally yelling, it's obvious that she's really angry at him. And not only that, she starts to go against his accusations. So essentially a heated argument ensues. Scott, of course, sees Rose's reactivity as the problem, not his behavior within the context of that class and not the way, of course, that he is treating Rose. And not only that, he and the rest of the entire class make Rose's reactivity not only the problem in this scenario, but decide that because she reacted at all, she's not truly as spiritually developed as they thought. Their subconscious expectation is that if she really is awakened, she should be able to emotionally be unaffected by, and therefore unreactive to, anything that anyone does to her. Hmm, that seems fair. This form of abuse, where reactivity itself has made the problem, and not what was done to cause that reactivity, is absolutely rampant in society. It is a huge problem in our anti-reaction culture. What is expected at this current moment in time is that a person does not get emotionally aroused or dysregulated 
is not phased or affected by anything someone else does or does not do, does not blame anyone for what they do or don't do, and does not defend themselves. What is glorified in society is emotional neutrality and numbness, i.e. not having emotions. And as people, let's just be honest, we have issues with anger most of all. No other emotional reaction is scapegoated as much as this one. I'm going to hit you with an absolute truth here, you guys, and I need you to get this, because especially those of you who are into consciousness work are slipping into an illusion beyond measure. You will hear everywhere that circumstances don't cause our emotional reactions, that they're a choice. But guess what? For people, they aren't a conscious choice. They are primal. That only changes as a result of a process of learning what to do about the reactions when they occur and of changing one's perception. The emotional system is something that can be developed, but it will never develop to be non-reactive. It will just react differently. This is really where that door opens for response rather than reactivity, which you keep talking about. But you know how people just tend to sort of bypass everything? This is another one of those bypasses. You can just bypass reactivity and just choose not to react. No. Okay, here it is again. You will be able to move away from a lot of that reactivity into response when you understand that that whole thing is a process. It's a process of changing perspective. It's a process of learning how to deal with your reactivity. It's a process of not being in resistance to your reactivity so that you know what to do with it. Here's a question I want to ask you also is where are you going to draw the line here in terms of expecting non-reactivity? Do you think it's fair to say to someone whose spouse just died, hey, it isn't the fact that your spouse died that caused you to get all emotionally aroused, i.e. reactive, because it isn't the circumstances that cause your emotional reactions. It's a choice that you make to feel that way. Or, hey, war vet, it's not the fireworks going off that cause you to react by your heart racing and by having to hide at home. Circumstances don't cause emotional reactions, okay? They're a choice. Or, hey, it isn't the fact that I just cheated on you that's the cause of your emotional reaction, okay? You can choose to feel however you want to feel. No matter what I do or don't do to you, it's called emotional responsibility. By the way, in case you want to learn more about this, you can watch my video titled, Am I Responsible for How Other People Feel? This form of abuse, where reactivity is always seen as the problem rather than what caused that reactivity is an especially rampant form of abuse in spiritual communities. And it's a lovely little shadow hiding within spiritual people. The reason is that in these communities and in these people, reactivity has been made the big bad wolf. Not only is it seen as bad and wrong, also incredibly unevolved. When we make reactivity the default problem, we are opening the door super wide, especially for emotional abuse. Both perpetrating it ourselves and enabling it in others. So to get out of this pattern, what we have to do is to step out of this damn emotional dark age that we're in. We've got to start to see the emotional damage that we do to other people. Also, this needs to be said Especially, it's very important when we step out of this emotional dark age to understand that you can do so much harm to somebody, not just by what you do, but why you fail to do. This is the realm of emotional neglect, remember? You can do so much emotional damage because of what you don't do in relationships and with other people, not just what you are doing. Also, we need to ask ourselves and answer honestly, what do we seriously expect? If someone gets hurt emotionally or mentally, is it right to expect them not to react? Is it right to expect them not to defend themselves? If you say you expect them to respond rather than to react, what do you think the right response should be when someone is hurt or threatened? What should their next response be if they have an open conversation so as to make somebody aware that they were hurt and the other person says, I'm not responsible for how you feel. What type of emotional relationship do you want to have with other people? What emotional responsibility are you taking 
not only for your own emotions, but for ensuring that you do not harm other people emotionally. Obviously, there is a place within the development of consciousness and within our own process of self-development for learning and accumulating better ways to work with our emotional arousal and dysregulation, i.e. reactivity. That is not a topic that is up for debate here. That's not what this video is about. If I want to teach people how to regulate emotions, how to deal with their reactivity, that's a different topic. The topic that's up for debate here is how healthy it is for us to make the big bad wolf reactivity and what that opens the door for in terms of abuse. What's important to know is that it is all too easy to scapegoat somebody because of their reactivity. It is all too easy to use somebody's reactivity as a smokescreen for somebody else's incredibly damaging behavior. And I'm going to end it on this. It is an especially sick game to cause harm to somebody else on any level. And then when they react to being harmed, to make them the problem or to scapegoat them for reacting to being harmed. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and consider sharing this video with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified of the next time that I post a video. I want to thank you personally for the bravery that you have to step into awareness. I'll see you in the next video.